So this week uh, we have the sin of the spies, of course, but I'd like to focus on something else, on food consumption and the kavanas, the meaning behind eating, because the differences between Rabbi Yaakov and the Magid are quite fascinating. So the verses we're talking about after the whole spiel that we all know about is Hashem speaks to Moses saying to him, you know, when you come to the land of Israel, it shall be that when you will eat of bread of the, la- of the bread of the land, you shall set aside a portion for Hashem. As the first of your kneading, you shall set aside a loaf as a portion, like the portion of the threshing hold. So you shall set it aside from the first of your kneading, shall you give a portion to Hashem for your generations. There's a bit of repetitiveness here, and, and, and the Magid of Zlochov notices, <clears throat> he says, that there are three levels of food consumption. And we learn about this from the way these verses are, are separated. So the first, the, the first, you know, kind of a, a manner in which a Jew eats is like all the world. And that is, you know, you simply eat for your consumption. And right, that is, you will eat the bread of the land. You're eating because you want to eat. For those people, it's important to say the bracha, right? To, to give the, the, the blessings before you eat and after, because the blessings are the bare minimum that enable the purification of your food. Okay. There's another level, and that's the second part of the verse, that says, um, uh, 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 as the first of your kneading, you shall set aside a loaf. Here it doesn't say lechem, bread, it says chala, a loaf, and you're going to set it aside as a truma. This, he says, alludes to the necessity to eat in order that our learning Torah and davening to Hashem will, will, you know, will do, will have the effect they need to have, right? So we're taking it to a different level. And this is why it says after you've eaten the, the challah, which is a special kind of bread, um, you then put it aside. The idea is that you, you, you put aside the food because you're going to use it later for the power for praying and studying. And then the third level is the final part where we're told, um, uh, uh, you know, that you're, you're going to give it a portion to Hashem. This is already something else. You're giving to Hashem. The first time it says this. What is this about? He says this alludes to the ability to uplift, to elevate the sparks. There are spiritual sparks within the food we eat. And here he says there are spiritual sparks within inanimate objects, plants, animals, and of course in human beings. And so when we eat, if we have the right intention, we are, we are up elevating the sparks. This is the highest level because when you do this, you're in fact, you know, you're, you're in a way acting a bit like the creator. You know, you're, you're sort of, you're, uh, um, you're able to, uh, um, if you like, it's a kind of ma- mi- micro divine providence for, for everything around us in the natural uh, realm. So it's all about that. Okay. Now, when we go to Rabbi Yaakov it's interesting. So, so if we look at the Magid of Zlotchov, it's clear that the audience is a Hasidic audience. It seems like it's a very, it's, it's a very simple, beautiful idea and that, you know, you understand there are different levels and everyone can aspire and say where I am. When we look at Rabbi Yaakov, we understand his audience is completely different. It's clear that Rabbi Yaakov is writing his text. It's not a written text based on a drosha he gives in the shtetl, but he's writing this for those who understand. And we know this because from the very moment he mentions this verse, he says, this is what the Ari is talking about, right? The Magi doesn't mention the Ari. Whoever knows this comes from the Ari knows. And where the Ari get it? From Yosef ben Shalom Ashkenazi. Whoever knows that knows that. But the, the, the uh, Rabbi Yaakov starts by saying we get this from the Ari. And he's on a completely different level because he starts talking about the actual kavanas you need. You need to be thinking about Aleph. And the Aleph you need to be thinking about is you need to break apart the Aleph and look at the Vav. And he then connects this to the number of teeth we have on the upper row and the lower row. And you become this sort of vehicle and the different numbers of things that we have. And, you know, the the amount of teeth and other stuff are connected to names of God. It's, you know, it's, it's clearly for those who understand. But what's very interesting is then he says, after he gives us this theoretical connection between our bodily parts, names of Hashem and letters, in connection to the sole purpose of eating, and that is to uplift the sparks, like the Magid, he then raises an interesting question. He says, and you might think to ask, uh, uh, you know, I know that when I pray or study, I'm uplifting sparks, but how can I be, when I'm eating like a behemoth, eating like an animal, how can I possibly be doing something spiritual? He says, don't, don't, don't think about that. He says, so the fact that he's raising this question means there are people in town, in Taflilat, in Morocco, who are wondering about this. And he's saying, it's a non-starter. It's, a no, it's not a question. It's clear that the rule is, we learn this from the Ari, he says, 
that you're, it's all about elevating the spiritual sparks from everything. And you should know that when you eat, you are elevating certain sparks, and when you're praying and daffening, you are other sparks. Which is also interesting when we think of the Magid, because he's, he's looking at this sort of scale, where there's first the davening and praying, and then there's elevating the sparks. In any event, thoughts on the Torah portion, uh, and on food consumption, the differences between the Magid and Rabbi Yaakov. Shabbat Shalom.